Hello there. Hello. We are back for a uh, second segment, which will be, we're going to kick off with uh, our special guest, Rick Farina, who will uh, answer the five questions. And then we're going to do a, uh, a conversation about password managers and roll your own password managers. But first, you ready, Rick? Oh, sure. You look ready. I feel ready. All right. Pants first question. <laughs> Three words to describe yourself. Ah, that, I, I actually agonized over this one because I did look at the show notes before. That's way more than three words. And uh, <laughs> yeah, the hedgehog's dilemma. The hedgehog's dilemma. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> um, if you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? See, this was really loaded because I'd prefer to be a mass murderer. But if it was a serial killer, just a, a straight gun, just a Desert Eagle point five zero would probably do the trick. So you went small. That's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> subtle. Subtle. No, Very I, subtle like one, yourself. One shot, one kill. Easy. That's, yeah. that's, no, that's one shot, multiple kills. Yeah. <laughs> Back to mass murder, you're good. That reminds me. i got to find well, that depends on what you're trying to kill. He didn't yeah. say people. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Thus Spoke Zero Chaos. Outstanding. In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? If Larry was here, definitely first. However, I, th I think I'm going to have to play it cool and go second if it's somebody I've never played with before. That's like that's, yourself. Yeah. That's, so uh, you can start anytime you want. Okay. Though. All right. <laughs> good, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> and the fifth question. Choose two celebrities, other than Paul and I, to be your parents. <laughs> I was close. You almost let people know the truth. Um, yeah. I, so I, I've decided for the most interesting man in the world and Sidney Bristow from Alias. Hmm. Huh. Okay. I think that would be a, a very interesting yeah, upbringing. That's yeah. outstanding. Great. Good stuff. Well, uh, thanks again, Rick, for joining us and hanging out. And you're going to hang out for uh, stories. And um, the next segment, uh, Michael, do you want to tee this up? We, we got a inquiry from a listener. And uh, if I were good at this, I would have uh, his name up. But I'm not sure he wants to be named. So... What are we going to talk about, Michael? Well, it, it was an interesting story that came in because we, we got on a little bit of a roll talking about LastPass, and, and that led to a lot of conversations. And so the, uh, Ryan sent in a note, and he just said, hey, right. let me get your opinion, pros and cons, rolling my own password manager, and then said, oh, and let me give you some more detail. Uh, I use a SQLite database. I encrypted bcrypt. Uh, I store the encrypted file on an SD card bit lockered. So, you know, kind of what, what do you guys think? Let me tee it up this way. I think there's three questions we have to answer. One, can you do it? Two, based on what Ryan shared with us, uh, what would you do differently? And then my favorite question is, should you do it? But well, let's get to should you in a second. So can you do it? Based on what Ryan described, um, what do you think? You can do it. I mean, you got a notepad and a piece of paper. You can roll your own. You could just make a password manager. Shouldn't be that hard. Should you do it? I think it's a more interesting question. Yeah, I mean, you certainly can. And, you know, he's he's put more thought and effort into what he's doing than what a lot of people do. You know, a lot of people will have a Fair know, enough. an encrypted Definitely. thumb drive mm -hmm. uh, or SD card or micro SD or something, and, the, and they'll use that, and that's it. He's actually got a couple of layers going on. I, I kind of wonder if the amount of complexity... Um, helps or hurts him. I'm not sure what he's doing for backup because one of the concerns I would have in using any kind of database, especially mm. something like SQLite where it's on removable media, if it if it Inside wiggles at the wrong time. Partitions. Yeah, if it wiggles <laughs> at the wrong time, uh, what's he doing for backup would be a concern as far as the recovery. As far as the security, I, it really depends on, uh, I think, on on the attack. You know, I... I um, but it's certainly doable. I think he's put some, some real thought into it and, you know, it face value, it sounds like there's uh, kind of belt and suspenders. So even if uh, he's implemented uh, bcrypt in some odd way, it's it's got, you know, BitLocker wrapped around it. Now, 
that gets into is it BitLocker on a laptop that's synced to his Hotmail or Live account, and therefore Microsoft has the keys, and is he up against a state-sponsored organization, in which case it doesn't matter what you do. Um, you know, Fair. <laughs> right? Uh, but, you know, what are you up against? And... Um, and, it, and we can't really tell, I don't think we can answer fairly the should you do it unless we know his use case. So one of the yep, one of the questions I've got is, is he trying to share passwords across multiple devices? Um, and that's, that, and yeah. there's, you know, there's, there becomes a challenge, right? There, there's, that's, that's where I was going to go, Jack. So, so yeah, yeah, well, Joff, go ahead. What do well, the, the platform diversity, I mean, can you do it on a shoestring if you're going to sit in front of a single platform and stuff the file away in some place that you think is relatively secure and you've got a fairly homogeneous use case? Yeah, why not? Roll your own. Have fun. Uh, if your expected use cases are going to involve multiple different devices across multiple different platforms, then you've got much bigger challenge. You know, And, and how far are you going to go? Are you going to implement your own... Uh, you ready to drink, everybody? Cloud-like service hmm. um, where, uh, you know, there you go, everybody picks up their drink. Uh, where you're going to, you know, try to put that encrypted blob of text somewhere up and uh, what are you doing? I mean, eventually you're getting towards uh, re-implementing what some of these big password vault vendors are well, doing. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I like the way, yeah. you know, Jack, you phrased it, which is what's your use case. The, the, there's a second part to that, which is what about existing solutions doesn't meet my needs? Uh, and if it's cost, that's fine. But the cost of your time to create this is is certainly significant. And and I think oh, the question Michael, would be, are you gaining? Yeah, Michael, you and I have had this conversation before too about <laughs> about the cost of time. Uh, man, Linux is look at, free. Looking around, yeah, looking around Linux this, looking around this as table. Long as your time is worth it. Uh, yeah, we, <laughs> there's uh, there's a lot of a lot of stuff we we like to do stuff ourselves damn it um, and and there's you know what though there's nothing wrong with that if you no, if you it, like if you, mowing your lawn mow your lawn and enjoy it right. it's just more it's just more of a question of it goes back to your point right why are you doing it because you want to learn and you think this is a way to learn how to do it better i think that's great you know but then if you're going to do your own password manager and you're going to go to this level of effort then why not create your own password creation tool as well and and store it it's like you know if you go look at like what one password has done or you go look at what LastPass has done they're pretty open about their stuff they share back into the community pretty well they document it exceptionally well if you reach out and talk to them they're they're happy to explain the choices and things that they're doing so you know it's it's kind of like i was looking to go can you sure could you make some better technical decisions here maybe should you do this i don't know why are you trying to do it if you want it to be yeah. highly functional uh, I, I might argue there's some other stuff. It's kind of like people who talk about doing their own encryption. Can you do it? Yeah. Should you? No. I don't know. Encryption's hard. <laughs> right. no, no, that one I think we can answer, right? I mean, because this one's been okay, answered a myriad of times. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, the, I was just being the, the I was just trying no. to stay yeah, polite in no, the phrase. But, uh, of it, you know, yeah. and, and it really, like, you know, back to the use case. How many, how many credentials are... Uh, how many credentials are you trying to store? Right? It's it's it's. I lost an ear. My hearing does suck, but not that bad. What? Um, Pull on my snake. Yeah, I. One of the things that LastPass lets me do, or a password manager, is keep track of all of the sites that I log into, and between work and personal and B sides and other things, it allows, for example, uh, people to share passwords securely without having to, well, air quotes on securely, <laughs> uh, without having to give them the password, and it synchronizes. And yeah, there's a weakness, but if you're, you know, engaged with organizations that have, you know, dozens or hundreds of people that need access to shared resources, and that way you can, no one has to remember the 40-character passphrase. That's awesome. Uh, it, you know, if you're me, I just took the, um, the breach as time to, yeah, it's time to... Uh, to refresh some critical passwords and the master password. And while I'm at it, let me see how many of these, you know, credentials I can dump, run through, du dump some duplicates. And I have pared my list down to uh, just slightly under 400 for the first time in years. Nice. Uh, but, you know, yeah, I've, I gotta do that, I've got dozens of machines in my lab. Um, I have some shared credentials so that, uh, you know, the, the scan tools can log in. But I have a bunch of unique credentials. Have a bunch of systems scattered around, you know, lab bits that are scattered hither and yon. 
Um, so I have a bunch of things, and I, you know, in spite of being an old fart, I do a lot of shit online, and I have a lot of passwords. So it, it lets me have much more secure passwords across hundreds of sites. If that's not your use case, then maybe it's it's not the, the well you know, the you know thing what, so you. let me let me see if i can kind of wrap it up with this and then ryan if if we miss something uh send us a note back we'll take a look at it but but you know one of the things i also look at with this too and i think this is a good for discussion point what are your requirements right we said mm -hmm. use case but so what are your requirements and and you know you guys point out some stuff i thought was interesting okay well what does your backup look like how are you going to maintain or store your backup? How many devices do you need it to be able to work against? And, and, and what's interesting about that then is that when we get to the place where we actually explain passwords to people and, and they suddenly freak out and go, okay, there's got to be a simpler way. We go, yeah, there's this thing called the password manager. And they get all excited. That lets us say, hey, guys, you know what? You, you're free to choose or build your own. Let me tell you some things you need to think about. In some of these features and why they're important and and why they might help you make one decision versus a next and so i think it's kind of the same thing here in terms of rolling your own but uh, i'll tell you what uh, uh, ryan and anybody else as you guys have already said thinking about it just thinking about it putting this level of thought into it uh you're ahead of the game no question about it so that's awesome. yeah I, i'd like to add one more thing michael the other, the other thing is 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 the question of how do you want to spend your time right mm -hmm. uh I mean, plenty of us in the community have had this idea and gone, oh, you know, I really want to implement that, right? So you spend a couple of hours and you implement something. Before you know it, you've got what, what I would term as alpha-level software. It works for you. It works on a very limited use case, a very specific focused area. And you usually don't want to put any more effort into it because you're not interested in putting any more time in it. You don't want to release it. You don't want to say, like, okay, this is going to be my toy. And if that's what Ryan is going after, go for it. Good for you, man. But if you want to go into like bigger diversity and you want to spread it amongst your friends, perhaps c contribute it to the open source community, you're biting off a whole lot bigger entity. And I would tread a little cautiously. That, th there's, there's my words of advice. So, no, I think it's great advice. So to that note, I, I actually uh, – I'm, I'm going to bite it. I'm going to admit it. I, I did something very, very similar to that for my, my laptop encryption. I rewrote the entire init RAM FS for Gen 2 so that it would support holding a GPG projected key on a micro SD card. It would boot the kernel and the RAM disk off the micro SD card, and the entire hard drive was completely locked, so I could just pop it out, walk away, and the laptop was completely immune to the evil maid attack. And um, you really got this James Bond stuff down. I, I spent 16 Hardcore, hours. <laughs> I, spent, I spent 16 hours working on that uh, in one night, starting at about 8 p.m. Uh, my wife was not as impressed when I was when I started screaming that I got it working. Um, <laughs> that said, that it's it's. It's what those little blue pills are for. Oh wait, sorry. If you're if you're interested in doing things like that, it's definitely worthwhile. But uh, from experience, let me tell you where it's going to break. Uh, number one, you're going to lose it. Uh, bad news, you're going to lose it. Uh, number two, before you lose it, you're going to corrupt the file system at least twice. At least as you're if you're as careful as I am. Uh, the micro SD cards absolutely suck. Uh, literally, they are not considered removable media. They are considered semi-removable media because there's actually a, a number, an expected life expectancy of how many times you can pull that thing in and out before it just shatters in your hand. So they're they're really fragile. Pull the it file in and out. number is not high. Yeah. It's not high. It's not high. The, Single digits. Yeah, they're really weak. They're they're very prone to corruption. Uh, when you're storing pictures and stuff, nobody cares. You know, an MP3 loses a bit or two. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Your encryption key loses a bit. You're done. Um, mm -hmm. So you're going to corrupt the file system. I was fortunate. I corrupted it twice, and I was able to repair it. I also kept a backup of the key, but I only had the key on there, not the entire you know, database. So it wasn't a lot of stuff for me to lose. So, yeah, be, be really careful. It's a, it's a terrible idea, and it's a lot of fun. So enjoy it. I'm glad you actually brought up this point because of what I immediately <laughs> thought of when I saw this question come in was removable media. And yeah. it, you, it, removable media, as you, as you just mentioned, is not really removable. Even a USB stick. I mean, yep. you, will, you will kill those it. things. And I've made that mistake of, of using a container on a USB stick and then the stick dying. And mm -hmm. I didn't have a backup of it. Yep. And that, that sucked. And I mean, we brought we opened this entire segment up with what is your backup policy? I didn't have one, and I learned that hard lesson. Isn't that always do it the, again. yeah? That's how your backup anytime policy. Anytime someone asks you about backup policy, you know that question came out of experience. But, yes. you know, I honestly wasn't thinking this brand new USB stick was going to die within a week. Yeah, uh, that and I was just like, you know, I'll just put this off for just you know just a little time. I'm too busy. I don't need to back this up right now. Well, there's my brand new USB stick. It's it's pretty much on fire. It this is done. Great. Yep. Got to back that thing up. 
Well, okay. I think we've uh, I think we've thrashed that pretty yeah. well. <laughs> let's let's take a uh, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and uh, do stories of the week, and then we will close out. Um, we'll have to figure a way to make fun of Paul in his absence, but let's take a a quick break, and uh, we'll be right back with stories of the week.